guess what? It's go-kart time! It sure is. Welcome, crew, to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. This is Jared's go-kart. Jared is one of the owners of the uh, in company that brings in the Forge stuff, which is just there on the shirts. I do like Forge gear. Um, this go-kart has been hanging up in the rafters of my workshop for over two years years yes and he made a promise you know Jared's like oh got a bit of a problem with this go-kart that I've got needs a bit of welding it's a bit beyond my skill set Andy can you help yes of course I can Jared no problem at all helpful Andy steps in as always yes I'd love to do that which of course I would but unfortunately lots of other things got in the way we had lots of fabrication work to do over the last 18 months we had the CB750 to finish. We've now got a Triumph Bonneville in for major work. Lots of other projects, DR200 for example. Then we did the monkey bike trip. We did the DR200 trip before that. There's been all, or oh, trailer build. There's been heaps of stuff going on over the last two years. And constantly, Jared's little go-kart kept getting pushed to one side. Uh, not forgotten about. Definitely not forgotten about, but through priorities just got put to one side anyway we've got to a point now where the triumph bonneville project has sort of been pushed to the side now waiting for parts it could be a few months before the bits turn up i have a window and i want to get this done i've been really looking forward to getting this project done for quite some time and finally i can do something that i want to do a go-kart yes now this go-kart is, what is it, a Manco Dingo go-kart. Now, it normally would have an engine. The whole thing's been stripped down. There's parts of this go-kart all over the place. There's a steering wheel somewhere over there. There's a couple of trays of bits kicking around the workshop. The rest of the roll cage framey stuff is all in the old Nissan Patrol that we have. The wheels are in one of the sheds down the garden. It's, it's basically, as most stuff does, dispersed across the property into various buildings and vehicles and stuff because, you know, there's not a lot of room in the workshop. So if it's not in use, it usually gets kicked out. However, the frame I deliberately kept hung up from the ceiling to keep reminding me it needed to be done. And uh, it's not there anymore because it's here on the winch, hanging from the ceiling just to make it a bit more interesting for you guys. Um... So the plan of attack is to get it down on the hoist, give the frame a bit of an inspection, sort of mark up which bits need of the tubing needs to be replaced. There's the floor uh, plate is really rotten as well. That's going to need to be replaced. We've got some three mil plate on the bench. Uh, we've got some six mil plates in stock as well. Uh, I did buy a load of tubing for this particular project when it first came in because my intentions were to crack on straight away with it most of that tubing has now been used for other stuff yes sadly we don't have a lot of tubing left so it's most likely i'll have to get some more but we've got something to be getting on with and then we'll also know better what extra amounts we need to get this finished the only downside is i've got to buy it in six meter lengths and we're never going to use another six meters of it yeah. who knows maybe going to build another go-kart one day uh, probably use stronger tube to be fair if I built one. It'll have a much bigger engine. So there it is. Best crack on, otherwise you're going to flick to another channel. Here we go. Oh, roll the intro. I always forget that bit. <laughs> Used. Right then, crew. Well, the main problem with this go-kart, because you say, Andy, why is it in bits? Well, it's really badly rusted. If you look down here, look, we've got not just the thin tin plate that sort of supports the seat 
and stuff. But the actual structure of the boy of the uh, the go kart is very very badly pitted, and it's lost a lot of its strength in quite a lot of the tubes that make up sort of the chassis on this little buggy. And if you look at the front, we can see that this one here, this cross brace here, is very badly rusted. See all the pitting in there, look. And that's pretty fundamental to holding the front wheels on, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the bumper's not too bad. It mounts the, 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 the throttle and the brake pedals as well. That's also badly pitted. It's not really structural as such, because these are so close to here. But, it, you know, we're going to have to replace it. So that's going to need to be replaced. We'll put a, a cross on there. That whole piece I'll have to renew. Uh, this whole piece that goes all the way across for the basically the front axle, I suppose you could call that, that will need to be replaced as well. And where these tubes join onto the main rails, all of this is going to need to be replaced because it's bad here. But... Towards the back of the buggy, it's not too bad at all. So, I think if we do a join somewhere around about there, so we've got just one bend to do, and we've got a nice pipe bender. These we're going to have to weld on once we get the, I think that's to do, oh, that could be brake cable actually. So that's, that's not too much of a problem. That can just reasonably go anywhere. That's not an issue. Um, the roll cage memory it, it fastens here for sure but i've no idea where else it fastens i don't know i'll have to look at some pictures which we'll do next but uh, there's also some pretty significant wear in the steering let me just set you up. it's not often we do free freehand camera stuff but just bear with me if i bring that down there and we just watch the play on the steering but look at that that's also very bad. So we'll, we will be fixing that somehow, making it a lot better than what it currently is because that's not acceptable in my book. It's not Andy's standard. And the other side will be exactly the same. Now, because there's so much that needs to be replaced, we're gonna have to put the frame on a jig. Yes. Now, looking at the, the rest of the vehicle, it's sort of, from the seat back, backwards, it's not bad at all. There's hardly any rust. It must have been under a cover or something. This, this, this spent a long time sat on somebody's driveway, um, just basically open to the elements. And I think that's, you know, and obviously it probably had grass growing under it and stuff. And that's why this part, which is close to the ground, is all rotted out, basically. Uh, we've got some pretty significant corrosion here. You can see it is building up there, look. So that piece, which comes up to the steering, we're going to have to replace sort of from about there downwards on both sides. So all that shot... And, of course, we're doing that bit there. Now, the seat itself is good, really, until about around here somewhere. So we're going to have to replace all of that piece down there as well. So there's, there's quite a few bits, and if we chop it all up in one go, it'll just be a pile of stuff, a pile of old bits of tube, and we won't know. We'll lose all the geometry of the steering. We'll lose dimensions and stuff. It will be really bad. Really, really bad. All we'd have is the back of the buggy left. So you may ask, hey Andy, why don't you just make a new go-kart for Jared? Just start from scratch, design it yourself, make it go fast, give it some awesome brakes, give it some decent suspension. Well, I could do that, but it would become a massive project. And that wasn't the brief. Okay, the brief was to fix this one, which is now down there. You can't even see it. Look, it's too far down. But anyway, the brief is to fix that. And I think the value, there's lots and lots of videos on YouTube about how to build your own go-kart. And Colin Furs does some great ones. And there are lots of other YouTube channels as well. The value here, before we get to the fun stuff of fitting engines and things, is knowing how to replace those corroded tubes on the chassis of the buggy 
without losing any of the steering geometry and dimensions. And the only way you can do that is to mount the frame to basically another frame, what we call a jig. And that's and we can weld it into place at certain strategic points, uh, put little outriggers on and stuff to support things, maybe little cradles to go on, like semi-circular bits of pipe so we know where the chassis rails run so we can get everything aligned again once we've cut it out of the out of the chassis and it's knowing how to do that and i haven't done lots of it but i understand the theory behind it and i've done it a few times um, it's knowing to do that and to build that jig before you start cutting on the chassis which makes all the difference it can save the buggy if you if we start cutting that up now it'll just be a pile of old bits of tube and it will be scrap you know, sure we can put new bits of tubing and things, but the chances are it'll be too, it'll be a longer buggy, or a shorter buggy, or it'll be wider. Uh, the steering will be all to pot. We get the caster and the camber all wrong. You know, it just it would be a bad job, and and it's not what I do. I try to do the best job that I can. Sometimes they're not 100, percent but we do the very best we can given the kit that we've got in this workshop. Um, so before we crack on and start to work out how what how big a jig it's going to be and what we're going to use we've got some pretty big box section kicking around although it has got galv on it but we can make something work let's have a look on the manco dingo website so you can you get an idea what this buggy should look like when it's all finished eventually the manco dingo buggy now I don't know whether this was a 285 or a 286 model. I have no idea. Uh, I did find you a couple of other photos. There's one. And we can see the engine at the back. Now again, I don't know if this is the original engine or not, but it has a uh, basically a, what we call a CVT drive. Oh, it's playing a video. A CVT drive um, from the engine um, as the as the sort of the primary drive and then it goes to a chain on oh, this is brilliant onto the rear axle uh, so it's chain drive is the final drive and then you've got the primary drive which is some kind of cvt drive so when you come off the throttle the vehicle can stop but the engine's still running as regards a power plant that we're going to use, I don't know yet. That hasn't yet been finalised. Jared would like to put in a like-for-like -like engine. Personally, I'm tempted to go for something a little bit different to make it a bit different. Uh, I'd like to put a DR200 engine in there, actually. That'd be pretty cool. I've got a spare one kicking around. Um, so maybe we'll do that. We just don't know yet. I've um, got another picture here for you. Probably a bit better quality. Probably the same buggy, actually, just from a different angle. And we've still got the original wheels, we've got the, the, the gold wheels and stuff, and all of this extra roll cage, well that's all, nice, that's all um, currently, you know, in the Nissan Patrol for storage. Uh, I don't think I've got the headrest, I don't think ours had a headrest, I say ours, I mean Jared's, it's not mine, um, but that should be the end result. They don't make these anymore, and that's because there was an accident. I think probably in the US, somebody got injured, and of course, the government stepped in and said, you shall never make another go-kart. So unfortunately, they're a thing of the past, which is a real shame. And even more important, why we should save the one that we've got. Because kids love to play in these things. I used to have a go-kart when I was a kid, and it was awesome. Now, believe it or not, we can actually get parts for these go-karts. This is the gokartsupply.com website in in thrust we trust very good um, and this is the, the buggy again you can see a picture there look and it tells you all about the various models there was a what was it a five horsepower to a six and a half horsepower manco dingo gokarts yeah so there's all sorts of stuff on there and we, we can get the bits they do still supply many of the parts which is really good news so if you've got one of these book one of these go-karts and you need some bits that's where you can go for them and this is a breakdown of the cvt drive by the looks of it you've got yeah that looks like the prime oh engine there looks that's the primary sheave stationary sheave it calls that and then you've got your secondary sheave there look and that will then convert it there we are to the chain drive and that will go down to the rear axle so pretty simple stuff to be fair but we can get the parts if we need to. They don't look too too expensive, fortunately. Uh, yeah. So, oh, there you go. Look, nice. That's a nice picture. 
Very cool little buggies, aren't they? And that's got plastic wheels, whereas the one we've got steel wheels. So yeah, there's obviously a few different variations. But there you go, that is the website, gokartsupply.com. There may be other ones out there, but that I think will be very, very useful uh, for, the, for the project. So I'm gonna crack on and come up with a plan for this particular jig. Uh, to you know, support the chassis as we cut bits and pieces out. Now, on this particular frame, the rear of it does step up by 15, 20 centimeters. So there's gonna to need to be some rises and bits and pieces on there. But I need to, to put limits on there of the, to show the maximum length, the width and so on. Most of that I can do with these little cradles because then the new pipe will just sit in the cradle um, on the jig and then you just weld it into place. It's a really simple way of doing it. So I'm not going to bore you with the whole process of making the jig. I'm going to crack on and I'll just grab the camera and just do little pieces to camera and show you how far I've got as we move through the project. Uh, this will certainly be a series of videos uh, with the end result, the buggy being completely finished with the engine and everything and we'll take it for a quick spin. Probably not around the garden, it's a bit small. We'll take it somewhere where there's a nice bit of open land and we'll cause some havoc. And, you know, obviously we'll film it with the GoPro and other cameras and hopefully we won't crash. But anyway, that's a long way down the line. This thing, this project could go on for quite a few months, hopefully not a year. Okay, well, while I crack on, here's a message from tool girl Holly and I'll see you shortly. Holly, over to you. Now then, crew, tool girl Holly here. Don't miss the next live stream, 8.30 a.m. Sunday. I've made a management decision. It's not often that happens. Um, I'm going to remove this center panel. I'll turn the bike, the, the quad, sorry, the buggy upside down, and I'm going to grind out the wells and remove this skid plate. And the reason for that is I need to be able to get around the pipes on the jig with those little sort of, you know, cradles that we're going to make. So next time you see the buggy, that won't be there. It won't. It'll be in the scrap bin. Now, with that bit out of the way, we can definitely get our little cradles around where the existing tubes are on the jig to make sure that everything stays exactly where it needs to be. I get the distinct impression that my workshop is going to very quickly fill with rust and dust. I'm going to do a lot of sneezing today. Right. The floor's out, as you've seen. I'm just gonna clean up those tubes. We just get rid of the loose rust, makes it easy to work with. Uh, and then I will crack on and build the jig. Mission update. Uh, I've made some little mounts. I was gonna use some pipe. Didn't have any pipe that was 25 point, I don't know, 38 millimeters ID. So I just found a hole saw that was the right size, near as damn it, and some lightweight box section. So we made, lots of these this is the uh, outside diameter of the largest pipe the chassis pipe on the frame and uh, well this is where we got to let me show you so this is how it's sort of panning out it's working extremely well very happy with it we've got uh, some additional mounts this is that uh, i-beam stuff i haven't used that for the actual jig i've just mounted it on that so i've got clearance for various uh, clamps and stuff, you know, but it's sort of coming together pretty well uh, Two I've done two of those mounts on either side at the moment There's one. There's one. There's two more over that side there. Look uh, it is the land of G clamps and other kinds of clamps and welding clamps and all sorts of stuff going on, but If I go at the back You'll see that those two bits of box section extremely strong bits of box section. It's about I think they're either, I think they're about five mil wall from memory. We used this on the pod for the off-road adventure trip we did with the monkey bike. So I had a bit spare 
and there is one more length left up in the rafters so we've got plenty to go out if we need it but i don't think we will uh so what's next to do is i need to weld a piece across here to hold the brace you know the, sorry the uh, the jig together because at the moment it's just two separate rails weld that across we'll probably stick one somewhere in the middle as well just to make sure nothing moves around and then of course we'll weld one at the back uh, and then once that's done I've got to make basically just little little sort of brackets outriggers and stuff where we get you know another one of these and that'll just sit under there like that so I might even just make some more you know and just use a longer piece of box section straight down to the straight down to here or we'll mount it on something you know it's, it's work in progress but uh, making these little mounts like this is extremely accurate you can put them where you want on the chassis you know and weld them to your to your jig and it doesn't have to be super accurate the only bit that has to be accurate is where this fits on the frame that's the key to a jig you know it doesn't matter if this box section is two millimeters further that way or two mil too far this way it makes no difference as long as this part is directly in contact with the frame and it's held in place and to do that i just used as you can see a clamp before i welded it so it's nice and tight under there and exactly the right place so then what we can do is we can cut that piece out you see and then make a new piece and it'll sit on these little um trusses if you want to call them that you know little mounts in exactly the right place and it'll get welded back in now at some point and probably reasonably early on i have to replace this now this is a this is a business critical part to be fair so what we're going to do is i'll weld a piece onto here and down onto the jig itself to basically hold that in exactly the right position whilst we're replacing that bit of tube and then once it's all welded up then i can just take that temporary stay off and it may it may involve a number of stays i don't know how good it may do a, another stay you know off the front as well because obviously you get heat distortion and stuff and it is quite a distance away from the jig so we need to minimize that as well uh, we could even if we wanted to weld a piece of box section between the two across the top you know and then that way it links the two together and maintains that angle but i think you're getting a pretty good idea of how this is going to work okay it sounds to me like mrs mechanic is just about to do lunch uh it's already about half past two quarter past two in the afternoon i think so i've only realistically got about another three maybe four hours to work on this today um i don't know how far we're going to get I mean, if i can get the jig pretty much finished today which i should be able to um I, i'd take that as a win in all honesty and then next time around when i'm back in the workshop next weekend i can set straight to cutting out the tubes making up new tube and welding it in and i've had a rake around and i i don't think i've actually got any tube left of the correct size for the frame the 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 largest size tube i think we've used it all for something bugger so I will have to source some of that next week. Um, probably involve buying, uh, take, well, taking a hacksaw with me. I'll take the grinder up because so I, I can't get six meters of tube in the truck. Ooh, and I'm not taking the trailer. It's far too big a trailer for one piece of tube, isn't it? Anyway, so we'll chop it up into lengths, bring it down in the truck, and then we'll use what we've got. But, uh, you know, that'll happen when it happens. Um, yeah, it's coming together very, very well. Very happy so far. So let me crack on. Uh, we'll, I'll do a bit more and I'll see you shortly.
are getting there. Now, that's the um, the actual main, you know, the actual jig itself welded up. Um, all the joints fully welded and it's still flat, which is a good thing. I decided to weld it up now before we put any more of these points on to the jig because if it was to distort, it would then move the position of these guides, so to speak, you know, little channels. Um, so if we weld it up first, then now when we fit these, they're going to stay in exactly the same position. That was a pretty good idea, really. So <sighs> we've got four at the front. I need four more at the back for that top piece. And well, we'll just go from there. We'll see how much we can get done today. It's about half past four now, I'm guessing. So better crack on. Right then crew, we've got two more mounts left that I made earlier on and we're going to make, use these to put a bracket across underneath where the, um, the that, that sort of front axle bit runs basically, that, that tube that's completely rotten that needs to be re replaced. If we use these then when we replace the tube we can get it in exactly the right place. So first of all I've got to cut a bracket, um, I don't know, a bit of angle iron or a bit of box, whatever I've got kicking around, I'm just using old scrap at the moment. Um, to weld into the jig and then these will sit on top of that come on I'll show you okay so yes very much work in progress we are doing really well though I'm very impressed with where things are going uh, so this is the tube that's going to be replaced that's sort of the most critical one to be perfectly honest in my opinion and we're going to fit these these little cradles underneath there one under there somewhere and another one under there and then that way we know it goes back in exactly the right position um, the front four are done and they're welded in they're done now completely finished the rears are in place again just used old scrap so it doesn't matter if it looks scruffy as long as it's good and strong and it's not going to flex and they are just tacked in so they're still to weld in and both sides are done you can see the one just down there look so things are coming together don't need to put any any of these brackets across the back and the reason for that is we're not going to be replacing any of that rear section so that's all good so it is coming together obviously there'll be other bits to replace and some we might need to add some more of these kind of cradle things to the jig as we go along but that's all part of the fun isn't it you know okay so there you go uh, I've got to crack on it's we're running out of time today it's starting to get dark outside mrs. mechanic is going to be yelling at me soon saying get inside your tea's ready and uh, you know we'll be tired you if you miss her tea or you're late for it dinners and the dog mr. mechanic that's usually what happens my mate looks very happy when that happens uh, okay so I've got to find some some more box section. I've got this this lighter weight stuff. This is actually, you know, it was free. It came in a motorcycle crate, so let's see if we can find some more of that. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And if you gotta stay strong and say goodbye, then you let her go. I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like a Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into the place You wanna love me? Well then baby have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you but I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side maybe we can be okay Okay, okay, maybe you could be the change I need today, I promise that I'm there Rebel this way, I really hope that you Will choose to stay 
<laughs> Sometimes when I watch the videos back, I go, seriously, you're going to put that out on your YouTube channel? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Comment, like, subscribe, as uh, James May would say. Anyway, it's been a long day. I've got a watery eye from all the fumes uh, and dust and stuff that's been going on today. But it's been really productive. We've sort of, you know when you start a project and you sort of, mm, should we do this? Should we do that? What's the best way of going about it? No, 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 have we got the right steel, you know, all, there's lots of variables. But once you get into it and you start using your brain, you go, you know what? This is coming together. And that off-road trailer was like that. We built a few months ago for the monkey bike adventure. You know, right at the start, it's like, ooh, are we doing it the right way? We kept changing the design a little bit, giving it tweaks here and there. And then you're like, click. This is going to be good. And I think I've already reached that stage already in the first video. The jig has come on brilliantly. Yes, it's very simple to look at now, but, you know, there's many different ways that I could have made that jig. Many different ways. It's not really cost anything, which is a good thing, because, you know, it's good to use the steel that you've got. The only two pieces that were actually new steel are those two bits of box section that go full length. And, I mean, you know, they can be cut out and reused. It's not the end of the world, is it? Anyway, let's. I'll take it. I'll give you a quick spin around the um, the frame. You can see what I've done so far. But I think realistically, we're now at the point where I can just clamp the whole thing up uh, and then just take out bits of pipe as we go. But hey, see what you think. So from the rear, we've got all four rear mounts uh, are fully welded in. Now you can see it. I've done the done the weld. It might look scruffy. It doesn't matter. In fact, the, the, um, the dimensions of the jig are completely irrelevant other than the position of these pieces. These are absolutely critical. But what's supporting them and how it gets there is completely irrelevant other than the fact they must all be linked together and rigidly. So they can't move independently, otherwise the jig becomes a, a pointless exercise. But uh, as it is, it's pretty strong. I think what I'll do, actually, is I'll lift the go-kart frame off now, and then you can see the jig on its own and how extensive it is. There's quite a bit of work gone into making the jig today. There you go. Well, oh, these bits are already temporary. They're just It's just sat on those, so it gives me access to be bench for all my jacks and, and clamps and bits and pieces, you know, because I'm lazy and can't be bothered to put them on the bench. Okay. Right, let's get it lifted off. Look at the state of my workshop. In actual fact, I've not used many tools today other than about a million batteries. I've been chasing my tail charging batteries uh, only because most of them were flat when I started this morning, which is entirely my fault. Right, we'll get you set up. Come on then. I know you're keen to have a look. No, oh, you're on the big tripod. Uh, that's not easy. Right. So that's the jig. Not these bits, it's just sat on those. So we can maybe look from the back. You know, it's not bad for an afternoon's work, is it really? Because we had a live stream this morning and I was a bit lethargic getting going. And then we had lunch. I've not had afternoon tea yet though, I think. I'm not sure. I can't really remember, maybe I have. So there are ten, basically 10 mounts, or positioning mounts, these cradles that we made, between the frame, the go-kart frame, and the jig at this point in time. There will be more, I'm sure, but it's an excellent start. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm gonna end this video here, or just do more on the next video. 
You lot don't like long videos, do you? You like short videos. Okay, this is the end. Building the jig. There you go, that'll be the first one. So, episode one, building the jig so that we can then repair the frame accurately. Keeping the dimensions and steering geometry and stuff. Okay, crew, if you enjoyed this video, why not click on the subscribe button? You can ring the bell. YouTube will send you a notification as and when I upload any new videos. Uh, I would say the next one in this series should go out in the next few weeks. Uh, what we are now, it's early August, so maybe by the end of August the second one will go out. I don't know, it might be sooner than that. I've got all next week to film, and all I'm doing next week is go-karts. So it could be sooner rather than later, to be fair. Um, now, you can find me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can email me directly, andymechanic, at live, L-I-V-E dot co dot UK. And if you want to support the channel, you can do that through Patreon or PayPal. Now, Patreon, there's a link uh, on the closing screen. There's a little link on there. Uh, for PayPal, just go to the, any PayPal link that gets you to the PayPal page. And you can send your money through to andymechanic at live.co.uk. That's the email that you quote when you want to send the cash. A buck, a couple of bucks, five bucks, whatever you can afford. Most appreciated. It really is. It goes towards doing projects like this uh, and, of course, all the previous projects. And did you know that there's over 800 videos on my channel now? 800. I can't believe it. I thought it was about 600. But YouTube tell me. Andy, you've got over 800 videos. Wow. That's amazing, Mr. YouTube. Thank you very much. Obviously, I put a lot of effort in. Anyway, I enjoy it. I really, really do. It sort of documents what I do. The last eight years, I'm a lot older now. I look twice as much older than I should do. But that's probably um, my day job, to be perfectly honest. Anyway. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and you can also share the video on your social media platform, Facebook, whatever you're on, Instagram, I, I don't know. Do a share for us, get the word out there. Let's try and get the channel over that magic 100,000 subscribers. And as of today, I think we're around about 83, just over 83,000 subs. No, 87,000 subs. That's right, just over 87,000 subs. Only 13,000 to go. Come on, people, give me a hand. All right, crew, see you next time. Cheers, I'll run out. And we get the job again. Oh! Ha, ha, ha.